Hi there. Let's go ahead and begin today's summary with uh, just a little explanation of how I like to take notes. It's totally up to you how you guys want to take notes for your textbook, for video lectures, but I like, I don't exactly think in um, timelines or organized notes. And when you're reading through the text or listening to a lecture, sometimes there are snippets that you can grasp. So this is actually a speed reading technique for how to take notes. So I like to start off with a main idea. So let's kind of do a summary of the 14th century Renaissance. So 1300s to 1400s. And let's start with some non-art things. So let's start with Italy because this is essentially where the Renaissance is born. Um, in Italy, it is not a unified country yet. So we have what we call city-states. So in that, there are a lot of rivalries that go on amongst um, areas in Italy. So Siena and Florence, for example, have some major rivalry that we're going to look at different artworks from each area. Um, if you think of uh, the, the gold Florin, this is from uh, named after Florence, and textiles are big in Florence. And then Italy also, if you are on a port city like Rome, then or uh, Venice, for example, you have access to water, then that means it's a trade city. Port cities um, have a lot of other things coming in from other countries and have outside influences. Um, so if we continue um, to go on with this idea of note taking, um, you can make little bubbles or squares or circles. This allows you to doodle if you want. Um, let's look at some social changes that we see. Um, the Black Plague is something that affects the 1300s and 1400s, and it changes the population. Um, numbers drop, um, people die, some people don't live very long. Um, we have some artists who die a young death. We also have a growing vernacular language, and the way this affects art is that um, artists and other people are, uh, they want more, uh, they're more literate. So it affects the intellectual side. So we have more literature, um, more reading available, um, along with printing presses and paper uh, being developed, which is something we will look at. Let's take a look at some art changes that we see. Um, we see a growing number of patrons on the market. This means um, people who pay for artwork. Um, we see a growing number of devotional art, public and private. Um, this is the time where humanism flourishes. So um, medieval art, there's this rejection of ideas of medieval art. So think Romanesque and Gothic um, architecture, um, what, what has been termed the Dark Ages, but we know really is not the Dark Ages because there was a lot of art being made. But those um, more ideas um, that were more medieval um, are kind of seen as old school and we're moving towards um, a different mindset. We see a lot of fresco painting, especially in the south. It's humid in Venice, so they don't flourish with uh, fresco paintings um, because of the humidity. But in the south, we see a lot of um, altarpieces and then a rise in portraiture that could perhaps be linked to humanism. So if you are a doodler, uh, you can do as much as you want um, with these um, sketches or uh, notes that you're taking. Um, this helps me also to get a grasp, you know, to get this in my head, whether it's a century, a chapter, um, a certain idea. Um, one of the other things that we see are a growing rise of monastic orders, especially um, Franciscans. So think of St. Francis of Assisi. We're going to look at a piece that's about him. Uh, the Dominicans are growing. Uh, they tend to renounce worldly goods and have um, a religious focus to their life. So this brings um, a change to the Italian life. Again, thinking of humanism, uh, what this really is, is more of an interest in the natural world, especially in the North, a revival of the classic values uh, from Greco-Roman, um, especially Greek philosophy, that man is the measure of all things. Um, this was an idea that Protagoras had come up with. Um, reason versus religion. Um, this is a growing time where um, the church is commissioning a lot of work, um, but it is more uh, intellectual. Another change that we see in artwork is perspective. Um, artists are starting to really understand human form and make three-dimensional uh, paintings that feel three-dimensional. 
um, in one point perspective as well as in making figures look actually three dimensional. So as we continue to go, um, I, I want you to kind of think about this chapter as a whole and then try to pull out um, things. It's really easy to get stuck in all the detail of one particular artist or one particular area, but ha being able to have a broad summary, I'm going to try to do this for every chapter. Um, so if this helps you, um, great. If it doesn't, um, you know, maybe make your own so that you're able to latch on to some things and have an idea and understanding after you've read the chapter um, what you have really done. One of the things that really helps us to remember things, um, reading it, but also taking notes. Actually, I know we're, we live in a digital world and this is an online class, but there's something very tangible about writing it down, circling it, coloring it, that helps us to remember it. So the idea of you writing it down, and for me having just a snippet then that I can go back to, and kind of refresh my mind, it's really helpful. Um, this can be a good study tool when it comes to test time.